Can I help us today as we look at declarations, and I want to examine about three people who did that in the Bible, to look at the results that happens when we decree and declare, when we begin to make a declaration. And it is an announcement. It is a speech. It's something we utter. It is something that we say. Uh, when we make these declarations and vows, according to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, it says, when you make a vow to God that we're not to delay in, in paying it, for he has no pleasures in fools. Pay what you vow, better not to vow than to make a vow and not complete it. So I say to us today as we consider declarations, because I want us to really examine our own lives personally. And like Ruth, you may be ready and willing today to make your own declaration. Uh, the Bible lets us know that when uh, a declaration is made, it must be spoken, it must be voiced, it must be expressed. It is something that is said, it's stated, it's articulated. And according to Deuteronomy 23, 23, the Bible says that which is gone from your lips, you shall keep it and perform it. For you voluntarily vow, declare to the to the Lord your God with your mouth and promised what you would do. And so I say to us on today that when we begin to decree and declare and make declarations uh, voluntarily uttering it, voicing it with our mouth, that we be sure that, we, so help us God, that we will fulfill it. Because there's a blessing that comes with declarations. When we consider Ruth a very familiar passage of scripture, we know that in the end, she came in barren. She came in as a widow, but by the end of the chapter, she's married, and she would soon have children. Her situation changed. Can I help us today by telling you that once she made a decision and made her declaration, we'll see that the change will come in the end, and her latter was better than her beginning. Amen? And so I say to us today, that you and I, as we enter 2023, what is it that you need or would like to decree and declare? Not to me, not to anyone else, but to God. What is it that you want to express or say or pronounce to God that is in your heart to do? Because I believe that so it was with Ruth, so it will be with us, that our situations and circumstances will be better. I know that because I began to research just a little bit and I want to consider three other persons other than Ruth who made vows, who made declarations and look at their outcome. And so the Bible is given to us uh, for teaching and what God does for one, the Bible says he has no respect of persons. What he did back then, I believe he'll do today. Amen. And so the first one that I want us to consider other than Ruth who would make a vow is Jacob. We remember Jacob who had to leave home to go to his uncle's Laban's house because there was trouble at home with him and his brother Esau. And so as he began to journey according to Genesis, the 28th chapter, he began to take his journey from home. And the Bible says that as he was on his way going to Laban's house, that Jacob came to a certain place and stayed there all night. Because the sun had set. And the Bible says, and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he laid down in that place to sleep. And then the Bible says he dreamed. And behold, there was a ladder that was set on earth and it, it top reached to heaven. And there the angels was descending and ascending upon him. Sometimes we're going to have to make vows even when we make our bed. My mama said, if you make your bed out of rocks, you got to sleep on it. And so here we find Jacob leaving home and he's sleeping on a bed of rocks. The Bible says he took a stone and made it his pillow. But the good news is that as he's laying there with the decisions and choices that he has made, because every decision has a consequence. So he, 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 he leaves home. He's no longer around his mother. He's no longer around his brother. The Bible says that he laid down on that rock and he dreamed and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I'm going to give it to you. And God began to uh, decree and declare to Jacob what his blessing would be. And verse 16 says that Jacob woke up. He woke up from his sleep and said, surely God is in this place and I didn't even know it. 
And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And then he rose early the next morning. And he took that stone that he had laid his head on and set it up as a pillar. And the Bible says he poured oil on top of it. So it seems like when he woke up and had heard the voice of the Lord and saw the angels descending and ascending, although he had slept on a rock. The Bible says that he poured oil on that rock. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city had been Luz previously. And here it is. Verse 20 says, then Jacob made a vow. He, he declared, he made a declaration. And he says these words to God. If God be with me, and if God will keep me in this way that I'm going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I can come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, oh God, I'll be sure to give you a tenth back to you. And so we see here in the text, as Jacob is fleeing, he's going to his uncle Laban's house. He, he stops by and have a dream laying there on rocks. And it's there that he hears a word from the Lord. He wakes up the next day because remember, our vow, our declaration is verbal. And he says something to God. Some of us right now are like Jacob. We're running from something. And it may not be our brother, but we're running from something in life. And right now we're sleeping and it's hard to sleep at night. Got king-sized bed and comfortable pillows, but we're tossing and turning. I decree and declare that I believe that just as God spoke to Jacob, he'll speak to us in this season. And so the Bible says that Jacob woke up and said, oh God, I know you've been here. And he made a vow. What is it that's bothering you and I today? That we have restless nights and we made our bed on a bed of rocks. I want to submit to us today that if we, like Jacob, would make a vow, until the Lord, it says, then Jacob, going to his uncle's house, leaving his family behind, said to God, if you will be with me, oh God, if you will keep me in the way that I'm going and give me bread and clothing. Not only that, he said, I want to come back home. And when I get home, I don't want my brother to be mad at me no more. I want to come back in peace. And then the Lord shall be my God. He said, God, if, if you'll do these things for me, I'll worship you. You'll be my God. And this stone which I have placed here, which I have anointed here, which I have set apart here, shall be the house of God. And of all that you give me, he told God, I know you're going to bless me. So all that you give me, I'll give you a tenth back to you. Can I help you today by telling you when we begin to make our declaration to God? I believe it comes with a blessing because I know that the, the Lord hears us. The Bible says in verse 13 that the Lord stood above it and said, I'm the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the land where you're at. I'm going to give it to you and not only you, but to your descendants. Your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. They are spread abroad from the west to the east, from the north to the south. And in you, all seeds and families of the earth shall be blessed. He was going to be blessed to be a blessing. Behold, he tells him, I'm with you. And I'll keep you wherever you go. At Laban's house, when you return back, I'll be with you and bring you back to this place. For I will not leave you until I've done what I've spoken. How many know that we can believe the word of the Lord? What God says, he follows through on his promises. So I submit to us today that some of us, perhaps like Jacob, may need to make a declaration, a vow to the Lord. And see, is it that God won't follow through on it just as he did with Jacob and bring him back to that place where you'll come back better than you were before you left. Begin to think about the declaration that you need to make and perhaps like Jacob was sleeping on rocks. But God is ready in this season, I believe, to turn it around. The second uh, vow that I want to submit to us, the second declaration that I want us to consider, not only will God bless us with possessions and bring us back, but the Bible says in Numbers chapter 21, particularly verse 2, that the king of Arad, the Canaanites, they were attacking Israel. 
And Israel heard that they were coming on the road to them. And they began to fight against Israel and took some of them as prisoners. Sometimes it ain't no time like that time when we feel that we've been captured, when we are at a place where we can't move to the left or to the right, that we'll begin to talk to God. But the Bible says, so Israel made a vow to God and said, if you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, when I, then I will utterly destroy the cities. Remember, a vow is something that's voluntary. A vow is something that's uttered. A vow is something that should not be broken. And so when they realized that their backs were up against the wall and Israel made a vow to God saying, Oh Lord, if you'll indeed let us defeat the enemy, defeat the Canaanites, I'll utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord did something. Because when we begin to make decrees and declarations unto the Lord, I believe when our heart is honest and we voluntarily do it, that we get God's ear. And sometimes that's all we need in the situation that we find ourselves in. We want to be delivered, but we don't have the ear of God. We call our brothers and our sisters, our parents and our friends. We even call the preacher, but when's the last time you got the ear of God? The Bible says, so Israel made a vow to God and said, oh God, it's okay if you deliver us. We'll utterly destroy the people. And the Bible says, and the Lord listened. How many here today need God to listen to what you're decreeing and declaring, what you're vowing? And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel. And he delivered up the Canaanites. And they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of that place will call Hormah. Stop by to tell you today that as we begin to make our vows unto the Lord, if we're honest with ourselves and God knows our heart, he'll listen. And something happens when God listens to us. The Bible says that they were able to defeat the enemy. I don't know what you are facing today, but it may not be an army as Israel was facing, but it may be an army of another problem that you're dealing with and you need deliverance from it. So it was with Israel, so it is with us today. I promise you that if he did it then, he'll do it now. And the Bible says, God, listen, when you make your declaration in this season, maybe tonight when you get home and begin to reflect back upon this message or play, press replay, you'll pause it right there and say, God, I need you to listen to me. Because when you listen to Israel, you deliver them. And I got a situation that I need deliverance from. I got a sickness and I need to be healed. I got a financial problem and I need a breakthrough. I got issues with my family and I need restoration. What is it that you need God to deliver you from? I dare you to make that vow and when you make it, I believe what he did then, he'll do now. He'll listen to us. Not only did he listen, the Bible says, and he delivered. Isn't that good news? Anybody ever told your problems and circumstances to other folks and they did listen, mm. but there was no deliverance. All right. Can I help us today by telling you our deliverance comes from God and God alone? No wonder the older people would say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Mm. There's no other help. I know if thou withdraw yourself from me, where shall we go? Mm. God listens and God delivers. The third one that I want us to consider as we, we hasten is Hannah. Hannah also made a declaration. She, she made a vow and she soon discovered. And this is the good news. I wanted to wait to the end till I tell Hannah's story. But he's a God of more than enough. When you begin to make your request known unto God and you open your mouth. This wasn't a silent prayer. Uh, no, we find Hannah in first. Samuel, uh, the first chapter, we find her being provoked. There was a panina in her life. And Hannah was being provoked because she was barren. And some of us got some paninas in our lives. Folks are provoking us and taunting us and making light of our situation. And because she was barren, she was not happy. She even went to her husband. And after now, her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why will you not eat him? Why is your heart so grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? But Hannah didn't answer him. The Bible says, because sometimes we need to just take it to the Lord All right. in prayer. Yes. The Bible says, so, and so Hannah didn't answer her husband. So Hannah arose 
after they had finished eating. Sounds like she was fasting. Uh, she needed a breakthrough. After they finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, now Eli the priest uh, was sitting on the seat at the doorpost of the tabernacle. And she was in bitterness of her soul. And the Bible says that Anna wept and she prayed to the Lord in anguish. Sometimes when you make your declaration to God, it may be with tears mm -hmm. in your eyes. All right. I like Hannah because she didn't tell her husband anymore what her problem was. Because telling him wasn't changing the situation. All right. All she right. decided to talk to God. And the Bible says in verse 11, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. Then she made a vow to the Lord of hosts. Mm. She told the Lord, if you will indeed just look on the affliction mm. of your maid servant. Mm. We saw that Israel's got God's ear. Mm -hmm. She got God's eye. When we get ready to make the declaration, sometimes we just need God to look at our situation. All right. Some of us are just like, just like Hannah, we're barren. Uh-huh, you're trying to give birth to something in your life. It's something new, perhaps, that you want to do or something you've been wanting for a long time. This didn't just happen overnight. She had been wanting a child for a long time. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that she, she made a vow to the Lord, a host, and said, Lord, if you will just look on the affliction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all we need God to do is just look at us. Right. Just look at my affliction. And then she said, when you look at me, God, I love her. She said, don't, just remember me. Don't forget what I look like. Don't forget this broken spirit. Don't forget this barren woman. Don't forget that Panana's been provoking me. Don't forget that my husband is trying to be the best that he can to me. God, when you look at me, remember me. All right. And God, uh, don't just remember me, mm -hmm. but put it there perpetually. Uh, don't forget your handmaiden. Mm -hmm. But when you give your handmaiden, here is the request. Make your request known and be specific about what you want God to do. She said, but will you give your maid servant, your handmaiden, a male child? And this is what I'll do, Lord. This is a declaration. Since you're looking at me, since I got your attention, then I'll give this child up back to you all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. And as she's making this declaration, it sounds like she was at the altar weeping and in anguish. The Bible says that the prophet saw her. And it happened as she continued to pray before the Lord. Don't let other folks looking at you stop you from praying. When you got God's eye on you, you better make your declaration. You better make it known. And it happened. The Bible says that she continued to pray before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. God was watching her situation. Right. He was watching her mouth. Uh -huh. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. And therefore Eli thought she was drunk. Mm. So Eli said to her, how long mm. will you be drunk? All right. Why don't you put away the wine from you? It doesn't matter what people say. Yeah, yeah I'm drunk. Drunk in the Holy Spirit. Right. You need a breakthrough. You need God to give birth to that thing in your life. And so, but, Aunt, but Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. Mm -hmm. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Yes. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, mm. for out of the abundance of my complaining grief, mm. I have not spoken until now. Can I help you by telling you even when you make your declaration, people may think you're drunk, may think you're crazy. Look at that woman, look at that man. Make it anyway. Right. Because when God's eye is on you, breakthrough is subject to come your way. Mm. And so she says to the prophet, she says, I'm not drunk. I haven't spoken until now. And Eli answered and said, go in peace. And the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, now she speaks. Mm. He said, go in peace. He bids the peace of God, shalom, upon her life. He doesn't shake the dust from his feet. He bids her peace in the name of the God of Israel that he grant your request. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way 
and ate and her face was no longer sad. See, when you make your request to God mm. and you got God's eye, All right. you can leave from the altar in peace. All right. And you don't have to say anything to anybody else. Just wait to see the manifestation of that which you have asked for. And she said, let your maid servant find favor. So the woman went her way. She ate and she was no longer sad. She didn't have the child yet. But she was no longer sad. She was believing God for that which she had petitioned him for. The Bible says, and then they arose early in the morning. And they worshiped before the Lord and returned to their house. She left the house of worship. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Mm. She so remember her prayer. Right. She said, Lord, look on me. Uh -huh. And remember me. Yes. And forget not your maid servant. Yes. And so her husband didn't know the vow that had been made. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they rose and they left the house of worship and returned to the, their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Mm -hmm. So in the process of time that Hannah conceived that she bore a son and she called his name Samuel mm -hmm. because I've asked from, uh, him from the Lord. All right. Well, the Bible lets us know that sooner or later they, they get ready to return back to the house of worship as they would go up yearly. But this time, Hannah had given birth to that which she asked for. Yeah. God honored her request. He looked at her. He didn't forget her. He remembered her. And now the child is here. Mm -hmm. There's only one other thing that needs to be done. She needs to honor the vow that she made. Yeah. Yeah. And so the Bible says, after not, her husband said to her, come on, let's Get ready to go. It's time to go up to make our sacrifices and our vows to the Lord. But Hannah did not go. For she said to her husband, not until this child is weaned. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take him that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. Mm -hmm. So Elkanah said to her, do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Wait until you wean him. Only let the Lord establish his word. And then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Can I help us today? Even when those who are closest to us don't understand. When you've made a vow and you've heard from the Lord and he's looked on your situation, stand on that vow. Yeah. And it was, the Bible says, that when she had weaned him, she took him up. She took three bulls and ephah and a skin of wine and she went back to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young and they slaughtered there and they offered their sacrifice. And she said, oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord. But I'm the woman. She's looking at Eli now, who stood before you here praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, I pray. And the Lord has granted me my petition, which I ask. Therefore, also, I have lent him to the Lord. As, as long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship them. So the child that she wanted so bad has finally appeared. But the good news is this. I told you that God is a God of more than enough. She made her request known. She honored her request and brought little Samuel back to the house where Eli was. The Bible says the child began to grow and, and the Lord ministered through him. And he was wearing his little ephod. And his mother would come up yearly, year after year. But look at what God did. And the Bible says and Eli would bless Elkanah and his family and say the Lord give you descendants. From this woman, not Penina. She done had hers, but from this woman. Mm -hmm. The one who had been provoked. The one who made a vow. The one who honored her vow. May the Lord give you descendants mm -hmm. from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go home and the Lord visited Hannah. Mm -hmm. And we thought he just visited Mary, but he visited Hannah. All right. And the Bible says so that she could see. And bore three sons All right. and two daughters. All right. Meanwhile, All right. the oldest child, the child Samuel, grew before the Lord. All right. Stop by to remind us that when we make a declaration Lord. and God is looking yeah. and God is listening and God is promising to bless us like he did Israel, he does exceedingly yeah. and abundantly yeah. more yeah. than we could ever think. Yeah. For Ephesians yes. 3 20 and 21 says, Now to him. Mm. Now to him in my Bible is capitalized. All right. uh, now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask a thing. Mm. How are you going to do it? Mm. According to the power that works in us. 
to him be the glory in the church of Jesus Christ for all generations. How is God going to accomplish this? He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. He said, but according to the power yes. that's working through us. Yes. I'm closing now, but I want to ask the question, do you got any power all right. working in all you? Because right. right. I told you he's no respecter of person. Yes. What he did for Hannah, yes. what he did for Israel, he'll do it for you. Yes. And for I, he will do it. He did it for Ruth. Yes. He's the same God. Yes. And when he does it, he does it exceedingly and abundantly. You can't even think to ask. She said, give me a child. All right. But she ended up with six children. All right. All right. That's the kind of God we serve. Right. But he yeah. says, I'm going to do it according to the power mm. that's working on the inside of us. Mm. Some of us are making decrees and declarations and vows. But it's the power all right. on the all inside. All right. Can I help us by telling you, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? sorcerer sword. He said, let me give you some money for that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But we got something as believers that money came by and according to the power working in us. Yes. God said he's going to give birth to some things and it's going to be more than we ask for. According to the power that works in us, he's going to deliver us like he did for Israel according to the power working in us. He's going to give us some possessions and land and things that we didn't ask for according to the power working in us. There's a boy is waiting yeah. for someone who is seeking yeah. that husband who's waiting to be found. Yeah. Stop by to tell the church today yeah. that if you and I would make our declaration voluntarily, mm. audibly unto the Lord, we'll get his ear. He'll see our situation and he'll deliver more than we could ever think. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. That's how I want to enter 2023. Hallelujah. Making a declaration Hallelujah. of what I need God yeah. to do in my life. Yes. What I need, you may not need. Somebody say, I don't need a baby. I, I'm not at war. But whatever your situation is, yes. I dare you to make a declaration. Hallelujah. Don't wait till tomorrow. Make it today. Mm. He's looking. He's listening. Yes. He's remembering. Yes. And he will not forget. Yes. Yes. So as we extend the invitation to Jesus, yes. those who can, standing all over the church today, making a declaration Christ. Christ made one to us. Jesus Christ, he came, he lived, he died, and he rose again. He got up with all power in his hand. He told the disciples one day, I'm coming back to rapture the church. The church who's been empowered. The church who's making declarations and vows and honoring them. I'm coming back one day. 